welcome back to the C Morning Show. You're still with us on C today. And we are now vamping up for our very first talk show of the morning. But before we start that, I want to ask my colleague first, Aline, who's right here next to me, to tell us a little bit about your experience after dropping your son off to school on the very first day. So uh, my son went to school, like he started early, pre-K. Mm. Uh, at around 18 months, he started school already, but then the Early Childhood Education Center is very close to our home mm. okay. and he felt comfortable so there was no problem with that. But I found a problem like separation anxiety when we try to change the arrangement mm -hmm. uh, to enroll him or to put him in a daycare. It was like heartbreaking because he cried for all the time care. for wow. days yeah. that we decided to drop off the plan oh, it's for yeah. daycare i mean daycare i also went through something similar i actually remember this very mm. vividly when i was two years old actually so yes. this was before kindergarten um it was actually at preschool so my mom would drop me off to school and um, I, I would have this separation anxiety where I would be yelling and crying and scratching the door, asking her to come back. Yeah. But actually, she was very she was very wise, so she would always tell me, I will be back in two hours. I will be here when you come out that door. And turns out she was there when she said she would be. So that built trust and um, reliability on my end. So then yes. I wasn't scared anymore that she would leave me. Mm. And even though starting school is a major milestone for every children as well as their parents, however, entering a new environment and being separated from parents can sometimes be very scary for some children. Yeah. And this situation is known as separation anxiety. And to discuss more about the topic, already joining us here in the studio, Orissa Angita Rinjani, educational psychologist at Ruma Dandelion. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me here, Karina and Ali. Yes, so maybe first yep. of all, can you maybe just share us a little bit about mm -hmm. what is separation anxiety really? Yes. A separation, a separation anxiety is a psychological condition mm -hmm. when a child uh, feels nervous or mm. anxiousness about being separate from the attachment figure, usually the primary caring, caregiver. Could be the moms and the dads or the grandparents sometimes mm. for the primary caregiver. So this is very normal, right? <laughs> very normal, don't have to worry. Uh, usually around um, especially six months to three years old mm -hmm. or preschool is very uh, usual common conditions. Okay, so uh, what triggers mm -hmm. yeah. uh, this separation anxiety in yeah. children and how can we help soothe them? Okay, there's uh, several factors that can trigger the separation anxiety. The one that you mentioned before, changing environment, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Going to new school is also very common. Mm. And then also the parental behavior could also trigger. What I mean is, if the parents feel anxious, ah. it could transfer. They can children. sense it. Yeah. They can sense it. Like when you want to drop off the new schools and to the teachers, and then you sense, okay, uh, I'm going to drop you off now. Uh, okay, are you okay? Miss, are you okay to handle my children? Right. right? The children can feel that nervousness. And then feels like, okay, my mom going to leave me here, my dad's going to leave me here in the new situation, and yeah. it's not really security. The sense of security is yeah, very yeah, important, that's right? How I felt. And then the other things when the parents are uh, overprotective. Mm -hmm. What I mean is like in daily life, they usually like closely monitoring everything the child does, mm -hmm. or managing or making kind of a little bit every decisions. Then the child is not having that much opportunity to learn to be independent. So it's harder for them to be separate from I the parents. See. So they, they're not sure of what to do when their parents are not there I'm with not them. Theirs, yes. Now, what, what are some symptoms, would you say, um, that you, know, you can sort of pinpoint in a yeah. kid when they have mm. separation anxiety? Yeah, the first is usually, of course, the worriness, yeah. right? That's the first symptoms. And then the clinginess sometimes. Mm. So they're like, they refuse to let you go or they following you around. Mm. They frequently check in, where's my mom? There yeah. was the bad, right? And then uh, some children's having like uh, 
physical complaints sometimes. So like I'm having a headache or um, stomach aches, mm. like I have experience too. Um, I'm saying at least in my own child or the students at the mm. school, yeah. it's like they're getting ready is okay. Having breakfast is okay. Going to the car and then driving off to school is okay. But once they see the school building and they begin, to, <laughs> I think I think I'm sick. <laughs> I think uh, my head is not really good or my stomach's hurt. Yeah. Sometimes it's having a bad crying. Children are smart. <laughs> <laughs> they are smart. They are, they are smart. resourceful. Yes. yes. So. How can we help them like mm. to adjust or to adapt so they feel like this school building is familiar to me? Yeah. Okay. This kind of thing. There are several things that parents can do. The first one, uh, like I said before, stay calm first. Yeah. That is the most important thing. You have to calm. And then uh, number two, you can't have transitions. So like before the schools, you talk about the schools. Maybe you want to walk by the schools or seeing the photo of them, mm. uh, letting them know that you're going to uh, the schools a couple of days, yeah, yeah sometimes. So they have not really um, famil you get familiar yeah. with that. Mm. And then uh, after that, you can also like do not prolong goodbye, actually. I mean, ah. when you already say, when you say, right, okay. that's true. Yeah, because goodbye needs to happen. And actually needs to happen quick. Quick. Yeah, yeah. Because if you're like, okay, mama leave, and then you, you <laughs> stand by there, like looking around, and it's like it's harder for the child to, to let you go. So when you say, okay, I'm going, like um, Miss Karen is mom's uh, right set. Yeah. I'm going to be here. Um, I'm going to pick you up, and then when you say that, you do that. Yeah. Trust. It's also it's real important. trust, right? It's yeah. very important and. Um, after that, if it's still hard, you can have like comforting objects. Mm. It's like comforting objects, like you can maybe bring your paper toy mm. or doll sometimes, or a photo of your parents inside the bag. Right. Like sometimes oh, it could uh, help them to suit and to transition into a new uh, environment. Now, but also, if, if you're a parent and yeah. you say um, that you will pick up, you, your kid has separation yeah. anxiety and you yeah. say you will pick up yeah. um, at a certain time. Say, if, if my mom said what she said to me but she mm -hmm. didn't show up then, yeah. do you think that could trigger a worsen separation anxiety in the yes. kid? Okay. Yes, because Again, it's new, uh, new environment, yeah. and then you're depend, uh, you're very dependable on the adults that you yeah. trust, and you cannot trust, uh, them. trust them. It's very hard for them then for the next day to mm. come back to school because they will feel very anxious, yeah. and then you, they see like they all the friends are already being mm. picked up, yeah. and they're alone, and that's exactly what they fear, right? Exactly. Being separated and being alone, mm. so it's going to be very. Uh, hard for them. So when that. parents can know whether okay, this is just a casual yeah. separation anxiety mm -hmm. experienced by yeah. every other kid, and when they need to talk to like uh, the teacher or psychologist mm -hmm. if they see like oh, this is more than the yeah, casual normal. one. Okay, so um, we have these terms like there's actually DSA. Developmental Separation Anxiety, mm -hmm. and then uh, SAD, Separation Anxiety Disorder. Oh. So it's like, it's um, similar, but different, different context, right? Developmental Separation Anxiety is that uh, your typically happens. Um, it's not most commonly in six months to three years old, but mm -hmm. it actually can transfer happen in certain specific situation. So going to new school in middle school, mm -hmm still could trigger separate yeah. anxiety, mm -hmm. right? True. Even us as adults, when yeah, go yeah. to new maybe work you, place. Yeah, new maybe work it's more place. separation anxiety with, with our partners. Yes, yeah. like that. It's It could happen, yeah. right, still. And then, but it's usually uh, the intensity of the emotion is mild mm -hmm. and it's quickly responds to reassurance mm -hmm. or support system. And uh, usually it's the duration is not long, so it's short-lived and uh, specific to the situations and the important thing is not really um, impact to your daily functioning so you mm. maybe feel anxious mm. but then you can still participate you can still um, engage in the social interactions but when it comes to the disorder yeah. right it's actually very excessive fear 
and it's um, prolonged more than one month. Mm. Uh, and actually, it's not only about going to school or being separated, because if there's a disorder, there's uh, other symptoms like you worry that something happened to you mm. or to your attachment figure for something. I very afraid that I'm going to get lost mm. or I'm going to get kidnapped, for wow. example, or my mom or my dad were getting sick and so I have to be separate, cannot be together, mm, sometimes yeah. like that. And usually you have uh, intense uh, physical complaints too, uh, if, if there's mm. going to be a disorder. Mm. So when you're dropping your kids off, but then after that you say, how come this? Oh, okay, maybe like 30 minutes she's really crying and after that, but she's playing. Or she's crying, but she's doing something, but still crying, right. yeah. but still engaging in the activity, <laughs> something like that, right? Yeah. And, and just do like that. Or um, it's happened to school, but not happened when it's already get familiar to the situations. Oh. That is actually just part of the common Transition. development. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, does it help that, you know, if, if your kid is an introvert, it's harder for them yeah. to blend in and adapt to the environment compared to those kids who are an yeah. extrovert? Okay. Certain uh, type of personality traits can influence how a child experience or copes with separations. Mm. But it's not always that the introvert uh, kid would having a separation anxiety yeah. because yeah, it's more a tendency uh, introversion gain energy when they um, quite alone oh. and the extroversion gain energy when, when they social. when they socialize and extrovert uh, child is love meeting new people or be around yeah. the social bigger circle right so they love being the center of attention so it's easier for them to cope but it's not we cannot say that okay if you're introvert then you must be having a safe reason anxiety yeah. So, until what age is separation anxiety usually considered, uh, normal. considered normal? Yeah. Uh, actually, again, uh, it usually happen in the preschool mm -hmm. when you're already in upper um, start to or lower elementary is okay. But it's actually if you're getting um, your upper elementary or going to middle school and again it happens uh, in very intense and more than one month, then it's better to talk to uh, professional help. So sometimes parents like in order to avoid drama, they will ask like the um, the maid to drop off the children or uh, grandma or anyone or mm -hmm. which one would you suggest like okay. parents take day off to drop off their mm -hmm. kid even though it's hard and painful okay. but mm. yeah. the parents need to be there yeah. okay. as the main caregiver. Is, um, I'm glad you asked uh, yes. these questions because I think first day of school um, is very huge milestones and I'm really suggesting that parents be there in the first milestones yeah. of their mm. child. Yeah. But again, the goal is not to having your child not cry. Mm. Because not uh, crying is fine, crying is okay. And we as parents have to, we have to face our own discomfort to hearing our children cry. Yes. Because sometimes, because our own discomfort, which is like, Okay, uh, we escaping the situations yeah. or we distracting we the kid it. and yeah. we don't solve it. But it's okay, but you're crying. Oh, okay, okay I, I know you're sad because um, we're going to be uh, separate for a moment. But again, reassurance yeah. and trust, I will be here. Or if you cannot pick up, then you say who's going to pick up. up. Okay. Yeah. But, and then the most important thing too, do not sneak around. Yes. When you're saying goodbye, so okay. it's like, hey, I'm just going to the toilet. I'm just, oh, I, I think you I leave. left something, and then you oh, leave, and you're lying. That's it's trust. Um, yeah. Yeah. When I was going Again. to uh, middle school, it was really hard for me because I was trans transitioning into new school. My dad actually took me to school every day since I grad until I graduated high school. So oh. sweet. So and then only now that I look back and I realize yeah. that actually built who I am yeah. today. In the so. middle school. Until, yeah, six years, never miss a day. <laughs> oh, <amazing. laughs> All right, Marissa, thank you so much thank for that so very much. insightful discussion. I mean, I'm not a parent yet, but uh, what an insight that is to, to being one later on. And I'm sure Baalin also I learned, a lot. learned a lot from thank that. You, so thank you so much for, having for being so here with us thank today. You. All right, folks, uh, that wraps up our very first talk show of the morning. We're now set for a commercial break, but when we return, we'll be bringing you headlines from around the world. Stay with us.